Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Play Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Last time, we made our way through Mushroom Way. <laughs> Get it, Way? Twice the same sentence. And today, we're heading off into the castle. But not without doing this. Yeah, there's an invisible NPC right here that just so happens to be hiding out behind this building here. And if you come... Uh, talk to him at various points in the game. He'll give you different dialogue pieces uh, to associate yourself with. So, yeah, check him out. Okay. Isn't there something in here, too? Or am I losing my mind? This is what happens when you introduce something like treasure boxes to me, because then I start going crazy and just lose my mind over what could potentially be there and not be there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Alright. What's in this room? Chancellor? I don't recall there ever being a Chancellor in the Mario universe. But I guess that makes sense, because I think the Chancellor is supposed to be a precursor to someone like, say, Toadsworth in the future, where he's kind of like this worrywart as character that's always by the princess's side is, and is absolutely obsessed with her well-being. And the Chancellor is basically no different from that. So maybe the Chancellor really is Toadsworth, unintentionally. Or it's just like another scrap character idea or concept, much like every other character just about in this game, Jesus. Hours ago. Is he now? <laughs> Spores alive. That's a very, that's a very, uh, toad thing to say. <laughs> So yeah, like, this is Mario's way of communicating. He plays... Not ventriloquism. I don't know what the fuck I was saying beforehand, but it's more so the fact that he plays a game of charades. It, I love how even the other toads off in the background here are playing along with him, too, to gain a better understanding of what the Flitty's talking about. I, I love that. That's such a good way to, like, put a spin on the silent protagonist trope, you know? Like, I know it's not the kind of thing you'd expect to see out of Mario, of all characters. But it's like... <laughs> uh, with what little they had to work with, I, I appreciate the amount of imagination they had going into this. <laughs> yeah, this, this guy really is the splitting image of Toadsworth. Alright, and we got a map. Alright, so we have a map. And this kind of gives us a general layout of how big the world in this game is. And as you can tell, it's pretty freaking huge. A lot of weird looking locations too. That you wouldn't see in any other Mario game, and for sure. So it's like, I don't know, does every Mario game take place in its own continuity? Or, like, how does it all work? I guess it kind of does, because, like, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam did kind of establish that, but... Does that apply for every Mario game, though? That's part of its own, like, little sub-series, like Galaxy... For instance, or...
Wait, did he say they only restore HP? Darn. I might have been wrong then. Yeah. Will do. So yeah, like the treasure vault here really isn't anything special. It's nothing more than a little tutorial of what to expect from the treasure chest slash item like blocks on the way. Um, you know, throughout the journey, you know. But they're still helpful regardless because we got one FB out of the whole ordeal anyway, so. And ten coins. You can do a lot with ten coins in this game, I promise you. <laughs> Hey, there's that weird crocodile guy that they were talking about earlier. <laughs> Ted Woosley, please. The exaggeration. <laughs> Big boys don't cry. It's just not fair. Oh. That's a little overkill. Yeah, kind of. There's nothing like a good cry. Are you implying you do this often? Sucks. <gasps> and yeah, um, speaking of things that kind of worked its way into other Mario games, yeah, Mario's kind of a big deal in his wor in his world. In, in fact, he's kind of a celebrity. Like, pretty much everybody knows about him. And I say this because it feels like every other Mario RPG after this one just kind of takes initiative of that fact, you know? <laughs> Are you sure you're a frog? Uh, sure. Who doesn't look at all like a frog? <laughs> Even the game knows so. And yeah, um... This being a more traditional based RPG, uh, we have party members! And not just an excuse to t bring Luigi with us on our quest. Uh, for every quest, that is. Uh, no, in this game you get actual party members, and they have their own line of defense and turns and stats and all that stuff. He seems to have better defense than us, though. So yeah, Mallow here is kind of our black mage of the game. Um, or just mage in general, really. So right off the bat, he starts off with Thunderbolt. And this move is pretty goddamn great to have in the early game. Because it's basically a move where it's it hits everything. And you don't even have to like consume extra MP to do that either. And as it says right here, hit Y just before the bolt ends, and you do additional damage. It works a lot like Mario's jump in that sense, where you have to just time it right, and booyah. Extra damage. And Thunderbolt is going to help us a lot in the early game. We're going to be using it a lot. So you better get used to it. So let's go ahead and put on those pants we got earlier. We don't want them running around naked. And, uh... Oof. Let's go ahead and get on the road. And yeah, he's a bit on the slow side. And he doesn't really have a weapon we can purchase at this given point in time either. So, yeah, he's going to be relying on Thunderbolt a lot to put in some damage. Because his physical damage output isn't really all that great at the moment.
Because I forgot my bazooka at all. Since when did toads carry bazookas? That's a weird visual fantasy, dude. <laughs> the vision, I guess. Let's get this show on the road. All right, so now we're in one of our first major dungeon areas of the game, Bandit's Way. And this one is signif significantly longer than Mushroom Way. So yeah, all of the enemies you see here, uh, way more dangerous compared to the ones we've seen before. So let's try out that hammer we just got. So yeah, uh, what's really cool about the weapons in Super Mario RPG is that not only do they come with their own line of like stats, such as additional attack power and such, they also have their own line of um, sequences where you have to time your timed head correctly as well. And yeah, this basically means just about every weapon you get in this game has its own animation and that's pretty freaking awesome for a game that came out in 1996 because I, I just want to let you guys know and remember that you know in games like Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger like sure you had visible sprites but like the animations for how you swung your weapon or what have you it never really changed but in this game they went the extra mile to give these weapons and moves and shit like all this extra detail and that really tells you that they were willing to go above and beyond for what would normally just be a typical mario rpg game you know attack up awesome not too strong but enough to finish this dude off in one hit That armor is already coming into handy. Woo! 62 points of damage. See, your timing really does matter for every single hit you make. Whoo! So let's see what we can do about this dude. Actually, you know what? Mallow, why don't you show off Thunderbolt? So as it's coming to the end of its animation, you basically gotta press Y and it comes into effect. The flash right there was the additional like time hit for the move, so keep that in mind. Oh, and another thing that's interesting about this game in particular is that um, FP is shared across the entire roster. So unlike in other games like Final Fantasy, where each character had its own like line of MP and what have you. Every character shares FP, meaning you really have to think about like what moves you're using at that given time before you throw them out. So yeah, unfortunately this is one of those games where you're encouraged to kind of like conserve an FP pretty heavily as you go on top of the fact that you can really only gain FP upon defeating or rather, finding them from, like, certain areas. You know what I'm saying? So Frog Gog here is a bit stronger than the typical enemies we've been running into so far. I think they have, like, what? 60 or 70 HP? They're pretty beefy, especially for this point in the game. And that's something you kind of got to get used to as well, is that just... A lot of the enemies in this game have a shit ton of HP for, like... No reason, no indiscernible reason whatsoever, and I don't really know why, but then again, you also just do, like, absurd amounts of, like, damage to an enemy as well, regardless of how low your HP looks in comparison to them, so, I don't know, it's kind of a win-win, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so with each level up bonus, as soon as you hit a certain level, you'll also gain special moves as well. And Fire Orb, much like Jump, also happens to fall within its own category of like uh, special elemental moves and weaknesses and what have you. So, let's see here. Okay, that's a little bit more than 
what we were getting initially, so. Attack power it is. I'm not going to be going for HP a lot, trust me. <laughs> Unless the game forces me to. Alright, just gonna time our jump right there. There we go. And... Hmm. Let's check out those dudettes down there. Yeah, remember when I said the enemies and characters in this world were, were really, really weird? Like, look at this. This is not something you'd see in, like, any other Mario game. <laughs> not now, not ever. It's pretty bizarre. <laughs> oh boy, I better watch your FP here. Go for the frog ox since he's got more HP. Ooh, okay. And of course, this being a more traditional based RPG wouldn't be completed without its own line of status elements and what have you. Well, I guess they kind of apply to other Mario RPGs too. What am I saying? That there is fear. And fear basically, whenever you try and hit an enemy, deal less damage to it than you would initially and it kind of sucks but unlike most other rpgs you don't have to worry about it persisting outside of battle in fact the moment you jump out of battle it goes away immediately so you don't really have to worry about getting rid of it outside of the battle and wasting with replenishable items you know 100 miles ahead of me huh get over here Thunderbolt away! You thought I was kidding when he said I'd spam that, huh? Let's check over here and see if there's any other item boxes or item blocks and what have you. Let's see, how far away is Mallow from a level up here? Oh, one! Okay. Yeah, we might actually go ahead and take this guy on next just to get a little extra EXP here <clears throat> there we go and yeah don't worry about the fact that leveling up seems pretty slow in this game like in all actuality, it's pretty easy to max out, like, your entire level right before the end of the game. Like, sure, the level progression seems slow now, but once you see where our level caps out at by the end of the game, it starts to make much more sense. So, if your number looks like it seems low, it isn't. Trust me, it isn't. Alright, HP rain. Awesome. And as I've said before, we're going for attack power. Even though he's not really a physical juggernaut, but like, I wasn't really getting anything out of special attack anyway. I kind of had to, you know. I'm such an idiot. I should have went for the spiky. That being said, however, um, <clears throat> I am kind of worried. As I've said before, I haven't played an RPG on the channel in a very long time. So, there may come a point where I will start running out of things to say. And at that point, I might start bringing in some guest commentators for the playthrough. Let me know what you guys think of that. Or rather, other members of the Meister Gaming League, that is. So... That's definitely something I'm considering at this point in time, but that might not happen for another few parts, so I wouldn't hold your breath on that. Uh, 
Alright, mushroom. I didn't really need one right now, but it works. Ah, screw it. Give me your give me your XP. Oh! Oh yeah! Level ups do fill up your FP, huh? That's good. Got a lot of coins from that encounter, too. Again, if a number seems low, it isn't. <laughs> but now is not the time. I guess not. But let's see if we can try to get it ourselves. Alright, so, yeah. Even though this is an RPG, Starman are most definitely prevalent in certain situations. And what's pretty cool about the Starman is that... Whenever you have it active, you can run into all sorts of enemies and completely get their encounters out of the way. And you still get the EXP from those um, run-ins too. So yeah, if you ever see a Starman, go crazy and run into all of the enemies you can because that is free experience, baby. In fact, there's actually one point later in the game where if you know how to utilize it well, you can actually get Infinite Starman, I believe? I don't know. My, my memory is kind of hazy. But there's one point in the game I know of where you can definitely exploit that fact and just continue getting EXP until you're all filled up for, like, experience points, you know? But man, we hit up a lot of enemies during that. Might see if we can try and level up again before we hit the boss. Ah, the music is so good. I'd have to look up the name of the composer, because I don't think it's Nuburo Yamato who composed this soundtrack, but it's pretty flipping good. A lot of legendary tracks to be found in this game. Anybody who's played it knows exactly what the highlights are. I don't think I'd really need to mention those. Forest bees. <clears throat> anyway. Okay. Do these guys give up a whole lot of EXP? Oh, okay. Apparently paratroopers are fast enough to like hit Mallow before he acts, but the other one didn't act. I swear I don't really know how the speed values in this game work. Ugh, it's so weird and funky. Maybe they have the same speed as Mallow? I don't really know. Really? Fine game. I'll play along. <laughs> Got 98... 9 hit points out of that level up, too. Oh, boy. We won't be dying for a while. At least not in the early game. Let's check our stats again. Alright, let's grind up Mallow real quick off screen and then see what we get out of that level up. Alright, I'm back. Mallow reaches level 4. Let's see. Are you for real? What is this bullcrap? Jeez. I want freaking special attack power. Like, why won't you give it to me, game? Okay? <sighs> whatever. Okay, I don't think I want to do this. Okay. So, in case you couldn't tell, this is basically the end of the area, and what you need to do here is you need to catch him by surprise. So, sneak up behind him, make sure he's not looking. Whew. 
Oh, I was trying to get behind him. I don't need to fight these enemies. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot! <laughs> Buddy. Oh, I guess that counts for him seeing me. Hmm? Does he see me? Fifty more years, huh? Okay, I see. That counted as him seeing us. Go away, Goomba. <laughs> oh, my lord. Oh, boy. Get out of my way, please. You guys can't hold a candle to my stats. Alright, so we need to be a little bit more fast. Okay, we've had enough of your bullshit. Mr. Crocodile here has a medium amount of HP compared to our last boss. I think he's got like 300? I think I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling up the stats from like the wiki or something just as like a pop-up or whatever. But I'll go ahead and pull up his stats right now. And uh, yeah, this dude hits pretty fucking hard. But the thing is, Mallow can't really hit him all that hard so the best course of action is to kind of keep Mallow on support and have Mario girl out, out on the offense and I feel like this is a pretty good boss fight to showcase that and get the player accustomed to like distributing roles out to the different party members you have so um, as I've said before fire orb is its own elemental chain so Mr. Alligator here happens to be weak against fire orb and we won't hesitate to use it. With the fire orb here, just press the Y button rapidly and you can fire out as many as you desire before the time is up and you can deal out major tons of damage. But it uses up more FP than jump, so you kind of have to be a bit careful there. Uh, let's go ahead and fill up on FP. So, because of that, whenever he's dousing a tail fire, that basically means that he loses a turn because you burnt him with fire orb. So, fire orb is pretty OP in this uh, boss fight. And we'll hit up uh, our team with one more honey syrup. Screwed that one up. You can kind of tell like what elemental chain something is just by like the little symbol that pops up whenever you start up a special move. So if you're wondering like, like say what kind of elemental like attribute you're using, that kind of helps too. But uh, let's see here. Let's hit Mallow up with a mushroom. I don't want to burn FP on uh, HP rain. Whew. That was a lot of HP. Okay. That wasn't too bad. I wasn't expecting it to go that well. tab out of it too.
Oh yeah, wasn't somebody telling us that they were missing their wallet? Might want to go ahead and give it back to them. And there's our exit out of here. So, oh, wow, I didn't realize I got a jar. That would have been helpful to know. <laughs> Alright, so, we're back at the start, and next time on Let's Play Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, we'll go back to the Mushroom Kingdom, where everything will go just fine. Right? Right? See you guys then.